Okay, I have a fascination now about, uh, I keep hearing about Houdini, this new engine. Is it a clone? There's a big controversy. Is it a clone? Who knows? Maybe they're all clones of each other. Maybe there's accusations floating around that Ribka might be a clone of some other engine, but no one's got any solid evidence. So it's all rumor and speculation. Um, but there was this 40 game match played recently between Ribka and Houdini. So Houdini, I think 1.5. And um, it's a mysterious game, I've got to, I've got to admit. Um, Houdini uh, is as like a magician who could like do these magical escape acts. Now here we, we see a kind of escape act with the king, uh, A, going from one side of the board to the other. And this incredible uh, restrained blockade uh, demonstration of white pawns being totally um, blocked and, and made useless. Uh, so I think those two aspects cause this massive evaluation shift in this game for what looked to be quite promising. Uh, it was like a Houdini kind of magic trick being carried out in this game. So let's go through it. So C4 from Ribka. And I'll, I'll stick the engine on my deep Ribka 4. Um, it was on much more hard, much greater hardware this match though. Um, so G3, Ribka's playing position here as white. Now this quick D5, trying to fight for the center immediately, not minding E5. So with this, you know, white's potentially weakening the light squares. So is that an aspect Houdini is going to do a Houdini act on a restraint strategy on these white squares later uh, with respect to white advancing pawns? So we'll see. Knight c6, already an interesting move. Um, so counterattacking on e5, so d4. Again, this emphasizes that it's going to be a strong white square restraint strategy coming up in this game. Knight takes c3, isolating uh, this pawn. And if d4 can be undermined later, then uh, then there'll be weakness in this structure. Otherwise, it seems a strong central structure at the moment. Nothing to criticize. But uh, it's scary that the pawns, you know, th there's potential restraints on the light squares. And like c4 might be useful on the c file later as well. So bishop f5 echoes that, that there's a hint of restraints going on positionally. Knight e2, e6. So the bishop doesn't mind being locked behind its own pawns now after castles h5. So heavy restraint, as you see on the light squares here. Bishop outside the pawn chain, and now rook c8, as though this, this square is going to be a big problem. f3 to try and uh, win this bishop, potentially. So this, this forces a concession from black. How is he going to make sure his bishop doesn't get trapped with g4 coming up? Well, Houdini plays g4, g5. Notice the king in the center, you know, is king safety going to be a major issue in this game with all this going on? Well, g4 takes, takes, now bishop g6. Uh, now, doesn't this suffer from a major problem? f6 is weak. With f6 being able to be blocked, also this pawn could be picked up. This is Ribka's plan now. It's tr attracted to rook f6. So how, how on earth do we assess this position? Well, actually, my Ribka on depth 12 is now indicating after this, black's actually better. Um, he's he's uh, somehow, uh, black is magically better already. Um, and all I've said so far, positionally about this game, is that black had this light square grip, you know, all these light squares, potential, you know, for C4. But the immediate problems facing black is is the loss of the g5 pawn even if it's an exchange sack which it is now bishop e7 g5 is on so it's taken okay now black can't play bishop takes f6 actually it's not an exchange sack because then bishop takes f6 and it's a disaster for black um you know the, the, the queen and rook uh, so that there's nothing here uh, so that's that's not actually the case that that's a problem uh What's magical now is the casualness of Black's play just to play Rook G8. So what, in fact, has been achieved? I, I can only perceive it's, it's um, an intensification, in a way, of a light square blockade. And also, white pieces are being tied in knots here. The Rook can't now go back because the Bishop takes G5. An option has been given for Black 
to win the exchange at any point now without the rook being a, a vulnerability on h8. So in fact the exchange um, now winning the exchange is an option but after h4 instead Houdini rather sadistically is still not taking uh, the exchange even though okay that might be slightly better for white here to take it here. So this timing of an exchange a winning material is usually something you get in a human computer game like some of the games I play where I offer a piece and against a normal human player they might take it immediately it's a computer they time it perfectly here it's been timed perfectly to, to play bishop takes f6 there'll be more damage done retreating that rook because of bishop g5 and the g file that, than losing the exchange so in fact black now as well as uh, using this major trump card the light square restraint strategy and c4 is, is undermining white's trump card this seemingly strong center with a powerful minority attack punching move b5 whoops b5 so if b4 happens d4 is going to be undermined and the rook can't really move back if if we give an example i mean here let's give a token example this would be much better for black there'll be a ready made king side attack as well against against the white king you know it's sitting there this doesn't look too pleasant this kind of position you know whoops protecting the pawn say there, there'll be bishop f5 so the king on g1 is not pleasant for this uh, the implications of moving that rook back so now white is just faced with this minority attack um, rather undermining operations undermine d4 so queen d2 and now we see the capture finally of winning that poor exchange from poor Ribka. Uh, and now um, with b5 having been played this next move um, is not blocking that b pawn so still b4 is going to be used to bash the white center with the queen also exerting immediate pressure now on d4 this is really vicious positional tactical timing massive restraints undermining of center a lot of things are being echoed in this game um, I just feel a bit naughty getting this game Scott it's like um, I feel naughty talking about this because really uh, I have no idea about the clone situation at all big controversies around but mysterious games like this which kind of echo you know Houdini by name maybe Houdini by nature because what's happened here you know black hasn't bothered casting and he's just magically creating a ready-made attack on the white king sitting on on g1 of course that that kind of stuff is totally um beyond an engine horizon that the king's safety is now a major issue but can these pawns actually do something uh so g5 and now this this curious uh knight retreat uh so the knight uh is is preferred now instead of sporting b4 to actually maybe threaten to play knight takes f6 uh or is that the case uh, with this mysterious knight move so we'll see rook f1 rook c7 okay defending maybe against maybe g6 is going to be tactical or just securing uh, f7 it seems but why would this move rook c7 for some reason provoke white into being tempted to play h6 with apparent advantage um, there's still this very strong light square blockade Pardon me. So these pawns are not not going anywhere too quickly to be able to generate a pass pawn. There's a blockader on h7, which is difficult to get rid of. Okay, and black now just casually carries on undermining. I think rook c7 actually prepares the double up rooks with a king maneuver. So it actually prepares. It's all part of blowing up the white center. I think rather sneakily. So b4, queen e3, and now the pain is is starting to set in. Um, knight d7 so with the option now of knight takes f6 at any time this idea of creating yourself an option um it's like in the stock market you might have an option to buy or something the, the the houdini is creating these options and the timing can then be made perfect after so bishop g7 though ruling out the option of knight f6 but now the undermining really sets in b takes c3 so d4 is getting weaker and weaker now Knight takes c3, rook c4, immediate tactical pressure is, is being translated from the previous positional play. And now, uh, 
we, we see some of the mystery of knight b8 being uncloaked, that actually now there's also knight f8. So what's this knight doing? It's helping even more this restraint on the light squares. So making g6 totally out, out of the question. Queen, queen a3, and now a5 gives options for queen b4 to parry this diagonal if needed. So rook f2, queen b4 now. Queen's ejected over there. And now rook c7, okay, parrying that immediate threat of queen f7. Bishop f1, now bishop e4 chasing the queen. Queen's counterattack, queen b6, again on that poor d4 pawn. So is black actually making progress here? Well, actually, with that bishop e4, as well as attacking the queen, it made way for the h7 square to be used by this knight. How is this knight crawling around? It's worse than Nimzovich. It's like a supercharged Nimzovichian maneuver here with this knight. Knight h7. So we could say, yeah, white's pawns have been restrained. And at the same time, the king's safety is in been kept in check. At the same time, White's unable to create a, a dangerous pass pawn. Um, how can Black exert the pressure? Still, Ribka thinks here 0.56. But is that picture about to change? Because the pawn structure has been undermined. The exploitable base of the pawn, pawn chain seems a bit more convenient in principle to exploit. Can this be proven as exploitable? Well, we see now after a4. That actually looks looks like a bundle, as though Knight g3 was preferred here. But then going back to a4 just to move after, I don't know. It was on much more powerful hardware than my machine. But it seems after this next move, queen b1, okay, the evaluations almost like remain the same. What's queen b1 doing? It's pinning the bishop on f1. It's intensifying this light square blockade. Um, but black looks as though it's like an engine which is taking the mickey, to be quite honest, with, with its play here in this game. Uh, knight g3, bishop g6, so f7 is, is very strong now. The rook can maybe be used for something else pretty soon, if f7 is supported again. King d7, so Nimzovich, I mean, moving the king, you can start doubling the rooks, it can start doubling the rooks, and the rooks can start infiltrating. Now, does this cause an evaluation shift? So the king goes now to the queen side, rather humorously, to b8. And the evaluation sunk down a little bit to 0 0.30 here at this point. But there still remains two questions about this game. The restraints on the light squares, the unavailability of creating a pass pawn, and potential further undermining of the d4 square. But now another factor is introduced, this doubling on the c-file and potential rook infiltration to the 7th rank. So now we get this rook infiltration to the seventh rank, and the rooks finally get double. We see some some easy, you know, positional play it seems, offering knight g6 because again, you know, black's still going to be solid. No chance for pass pawn, which will be dangerous anytime soon. Um, and black now, my ribka is saying black's better actually. So takes takes the material. It's starting to to rear its its real value. Uh, so bishop f5 marks out an h3 like mating net potentially and now white totally um collapses uh rook c3 queen b3 intensifying like multiple times pressure on h3 so bishop g2 so there's options now potentially uh well especially the knight moves with rook h3 but is that knight going to move? Well, the next move is designed, I think, to get rid of this defensive knight, um, at the same time risking a, a seemingly, you know, very, very dangerous h7, h8. But black does this to, to, to break the camel's back now, knight f8. At the moment, the pawn's not going anywhere anyway. Okay, now rook g, g3 introduces the idea of rook g4, nasty stuff. So the king's been sucked up the board, and now, it's gone actually, it's, it's, the position's gone, it's minus, minus 4.46 after knight g6 especially. Um, the, the h pawn has been rendered insignificant here and white's king safety has just collapsed. Uh, with the black king, you know, magically over here, the whole evaluation picture has, has been magically transformed like a Houdini act. Um, so knight takes f4 with with major um, king issues, allowing white to queen here. I think queening is, is hopeless. 
Um, no, sorry, it's check. Pardon me. Scrap all that. It's knight takes f4 is check. So the king moves. In fact, the pawn's now removed. Bishop bishop takes h7. And now knight takes g2. So white's being reduced to rubble. He's losing material. He's, he's a piece. Um, he's a rook down. White's a rook down. Uh, so queen b7 threatens um, like things like f5. King c8 cheekily attacking the bishop of the king. Now knight e3, so there's knight f5s coming up as well as attacking the queen. Um, here it's like the end of the game. I think white um, they resigns on behalf of the engine or something. But uh, it's 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 a rook down. Obviously it's it's fairly hopeless. Possible continuation. Um, so 56 queen f6. Check uh, queen d7. Well, it's just it's just a rook down basically. Rook h3. There's going to be mating nets arriving soon. I check. We can win the queen. Uh, that's we don't need to go on from that. <laughs> so I don't know. It's it's like a weird game, isn't it? This is like redefining uh, chess principles. Not bothering to castle. Just just. Uh, just getting something very interesting out of the opening straight away here. This idea that white has a potentially fixed pawn structure. So there's light square restraints. But um, there's this idea of offering the bishop uh, to further increase white's weaknesses maybe on the king side. As though the bishop can be trapped and that would be an advantage uh, to white. But it turns out uh, magically that this whole idea is is now flawed, even though White seems to be winning uh, the G5 pawn. Uh, winning that pawn on that dangerous uh, G file is like a winning a poisoned pawn. Uh, so we have um, what what looked like a, you know a basic undermining operation of of the center, but but actually part of that I think was just being able to infiltrate now um, the exchange up with the rooks that really caused uh, the biggest. A variation shift as well as maintaining an iron grip light square blockade of these pawns um, so the king <laughs> going cheekily to b8 and then and then the rooks come in the heavy artillery comes in uh, for for an infiltration which looks a bit like um, Nimzovich Capablanca when when the rooks gradually gradually infiltrated um, white's pieces gradually infiltrating uh, causing um, massive damage and a valuation shift. So um, that poor pawn uh, never had a chance. Um, strange game. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated to have a look at a few others actually after this. I don't know about you guys, but that was pretty fascinating stuff. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.